Like so many early scientists, Robert Boyle was born into a wealthy family. His early interest in alchemy and theology developed into scientific investigation. In about 1657, he began a series of experiments on the mechanical properties of gases, assisted by Robert Hooke, who designed the equipment he used. He published his findings about three years later. Eventually, in about 1662, he espoused a general law which became known as Boyle's Law, although in fact others before him had discovered the same relationship, but without publishing. In essence, what he said was that the pressure of a gas is inversely proportional to its volume, providing you have a fixed mass of gas. So a graph plotted of pressure against volume looks like this. Boyle's approach was empirical. In other words, he relied on measurements, not on explanations. He didn't think of gases in terms of molecules or atoms. But here we'll work backwards, and we'll consider this relationship in terms of atoms and molecules as we understand them now. Consider a few molecules of gas trapped in a syringe. As they move around, they hit the sides of the container. It is these impacts that cause the pressure of the gas. Now, if we take that container and make it much smaller, with less room to move around, the impacts of the molecules on the sides of the container are far more frequent. Because they're more frequent, the forces are greater and therefore the pressure is greater. If we look at these changes in terms of the graph, at the beginning, the volume of the whole syringe, with the molecules trapped inside it, leads to a pressure marked on the graph. When the volume is halved, the molecules are constrained into a much smaller space. In half the volume, the molecules have twice as many impacts and therefore exert double the pressure. If we express this in the form of a simple equation, we can say the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume, and so it is equal to a constant divided by the volume. If we rearrange this, then the pressure times the volume is constant, providing we have a fixed amount of gas, and providing that the temperature is unchanged. Writing this a little differently, if P1 and V1 are the initial pressure and volumes of the gases as marked, and then that volume is reduced so that the pressure rises into the states V2 and P2. We can show that then as P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2 for a fixed mass of gas at a fixed temperature. Other videos in this series examine the effect of temperature change. Thank you for watching.